Welcome to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Thais Gaines, and I'm here today with Dr. Alexander Von Akoy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Great to be here. So you've been involved in a couple of studies looking at real-world outcomes for patients with metastatic melanoma treated with either targeted therapies or immunotherapy. What additional value do these studies provide to the existing phase three? So I think it's really important to also study these drugs when they are approved and being reimbursed and being used in the real world situation. Because the real world you will see that unlike clinical studies where there are certain limitations on the inclusion and exclusion criteria, also additional patients will be treated in the real world setting. So you want to keep up the same safety profile of the drug and the same efficacy of the drug. And that's the reason why we do these type of studies. So how were the data collected for these studies? So the interesting thing is in the Netherlands, we have a registration which covers all of the patients in the country with a stage four melanoma. So we actually have all of the patient data on these patients. It's mandatory for the reimbursement. Um, so we have a prospective registry where every hospital puts in all the different data from every single patient. So how do vemurafenib and ipilimumab perform in a real world setting according to these studies? So actually quite comparable to what we've seen from the phase three registration study. So the um, efficacy seems to be comparable even if you expand the type of patients you're treating. So it might be patients in the poorer status or older patients. Uh, and the safety profile is the same as we've seen. So we've not seen any additional concerns regarding uh, toxicities that were unexpected uh, coming out of this. And what do you think accounts for any differences that you've seen in the efficacy? So one of the things that is difficult is that we don't know when a patient was coming off treatment for progression or because of a switch for other reasons. That is something we could not capture. So what we've called it is rather than progression-free survival or relapse-free survival, we've called it time to next treatment. And that might be a bit shorter than you know, the progression-free survival that has been seen, but we're not sure that it is because of progression or because you want to start with a targeted therapy and then switch to an immunotherapy. That could also be the case. Well, thank you for sharing this information with us and thank you for joining us for this practice update.